Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're going to build this. This is a gravity-fed, self-refilling, wicking, hydroponic grass fodder system for chickens. Of course it is. Now, anyone that owns chickens will tell you, unless you're grazing them or growing the vegetables to feed them yourself, chicken feed is very expensive. The chickens will also exhaust any grass that grows within their pen very fast. And sometimes you don't want to let them out for fear of destroying your entire food garden. So to fix this problem, we're going to adapt this rain gutter grow system. Have a go at this system. The plants are absolutely loving it. From the basil, the pumpkins and the squash, the zucchini, the citrus plants, I mean the passion fruit, even the leafy greens. Every plant type has been flourishing and all on the same nutrients. So we're going to try and adapt this system into a system that we can use to fodder for chickens and chickens love grass. So if I can adapt this system into a system that we can grow grass potentially forever, as long as you fill up those hydroponic nutrients, the rootstock of that grass will keep shooting up new tips, which the chickens can then crop off and chickens that are happy with a grass-fed diet produce stunning yolks. So to build this system, you'll need all the equipment that we use to build the rain gutter grow system, which you can find in this video, as well as your reservoir. We'll need some aviary mesh and something to attach it to our planks of wood. These are 100 by 40 planks of treated pine and we'll find out whether that works for our system as we go. You'll also need some kind of base. Now I'm going to use a pallet uh, as the means of holding this system off the ground. Uh, we'll also be using some poly pond liner uh, just to keep everything uh, within the system moist and uh, in the system itself. <laughs> we'll use some geofab and some fittings to connect all the system components together. So to start with, we're going to set up the base so that we have a base to build our chicken fodder frame on. All right, so straight off the bat, I run into a problem. Um, I was gonna pass underneath the pallet with uh, the piping, but I've run into the supports uh, for the pallet and I can't, uh, it's too deep for my multi-tool. Um, so I'm going to have to pass a circular saw straight across the top of them at about uh, the width or, or the height of the tubing. I haven't measured that yet. Um, so I'm going to pass the saw, saw over the top and then I'll just uh, multi-tool the bottom off and we should be left with a nice clear channel for our pipe to travel through. So the depth I'm running the circ saw at is 60 millimetres. All right, now we can go along with our multi-tool and chop all of the bits still connecting it to the pallet. All right, now our grow guy should just fit nicely down the middle of the pallet. <laughs> so now you can see the general layout of the system coming together. This is going to be the fodder frame and in each of these fodder pits, uh, we're going to have cocoa and perlite as a growing medium with the geofab underneath it and underneath that we'll have the PVC pond liner. The reason the geofab is there is so when we screw it down, the roots of the grass can get into the geofab and anchor. And rather than the chickens ripping the whole grass out every time they feed, they'll only be able to snip the tops of the leaves 
uh, rather than rip out the whole plant. From this channel, we'll have three net cups on each side, which will then wick up into the grass fodder system. On this end, we'll then have a reservoir feeding it with a high nitrogen fertilizer so that the grass continually grows as long as there is a source of fertilizer and water. In essence, this system transforms cheap hydroponic nutrient into expensive eggs and meat. So I'm just going to mark and cut uh, these planks and then we can start assembling the system in the place that we want the system to go. And there we have the full system layout. This layout is important because the Avery mesh that I've bought is 1200 wide. Now this pallet is 1100 by 1100. This pallet is 1200 by 100, 1200, 100. That makes the entire length of the system uh, 2.1 meters or 2100. And the width of the system across is 1100. Uh, which means that I'll have 50 mil on each side to play with so that I can bend the wire down over it so that it's not uh, up and able to catch the chicken's legs. Now that I've got all the parts ready to go, we can put it in its final location and make sure that it's nice and level ready for assembly. I'm gonna assemble the frame here and now because it's just a bit easier in this scenario. I'm gonna pre-drill out the holes and then screw the pieces together. I only need the frame. And these are the guys we're making the fodder system for. <laughs> we actually hatched these chickens a few months ago and they featured in the cheap alternative seed raising method video. Anyway, good girls. Oh, you got a mosquito on you. It might be a boy. <laughs> good. I can't assume your gender, chicken. Okay, now I put it in place upside down so we can attach the pallets to the frame using screws and washers. So I'll just pre drill the holes and pop in the screws and washers. <laughs> yeah. Just to stop any future problems, at, during the whole process, we're trying our best to keep this as level as humanly possible. Because moving a system, once it's completely built and making it level, is more of a hassle than starting from level. You can always chalk up the legs, though. So at this point, we're going to lay out and cut to size our PVC pond liner uh, and make a lining for the inside of the two squares that we've created uh, within this structure. All right, so... This pond liner is gonna serve like a kind of a dual purpose. Uh, it not only stops uh, all of the cocoa and everything that's in the, here, the grass and whatnot, falling straight through the pallets. It's also gonna serve as a barrier between these posts and the uh, wet, damp uh, cocoa peat and grass and whatnot. These are treated pine, so I didn't want any of the arsenic or whatever it's treated with uh, to seep into the system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this over the top and we'll attach it to the bottom with some shade cloth anchors. Now I almost forgot we're going to add in some geofab. Uh, this is to keep the grass from being able to be pulled up uh, once the chickens are pulling on the tops of the uh, grasses. Now our poly lining and our geofab are attached. We can get our 
aviary mesh and lay it over the top so that they can't get into uh, the roots of the plants. I don't know why they need to cover everything with plastic. Now that our wire is cut, we're going to move this wire to the side for a second. And now we're going to cut holes in our geofab and our PVC for the net cups, which are gonna drop into the rail on the system. So just feel where the holes are, and then just do a cross slit, and into that cross, you should just be able to push the net cup in. Like so. There we go. All right, so now I'm just going to cut the end off and put a new end cap and assembly on this uh, just because when I made this, I wasn't anticipating using it for this system. Let's do that. Right, so I'm now gonna put a hole in my barrel uh, so I can insert my bulkhead uh, and my tap so that I can run my hose from my reservoir to my fodder system. All right, so I'm gonna set up my res here, which is outside of the chicken pen uh, purely because my hose reaches to this point, it doesn't reach inside the chicken pen. Also, I don't want to give them anything to jump on so they can then jump out of the chicken pen. So let's get some water in this bad boy, hook up the hose, and see if it's level. Now, I'm going to have to make up a guard for this float valve because I've already seen the chickens come along and peck at it. So... When there's water in here, that's even more so going to be the case. It's like one of those little chicken nipples, except the larger version, obviously. So I'm going to make up a guard out of 100 mil pipe, uh, and we're just going to slip it over the top so that they can't get their heads in. To do this, I'm just going to cut some 100 mil pipe uh, pretty much straight down the middle, and uh, that should just give me something to slide over the top of it. This is also going to make a rather excellent light cover. So no light will get into the nutrient solution and cause algal blooms. I'm going to add this to my other systems because my pumpkins have been doing this. So as they've grown, the pumpkins have actually started to, you know, venture out. And one of the vines lent across the float valve pushed it down and drained my res. So, uh, guards for light and for chickens and for venturing pumpkins. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna screw on the cap that we just sealed up and the system should be ready for me to turn the tap on and we can check our levels. Use the different tap. Now she's filling up. This will give us the true level. We can also check for any leaks in the system. Now, because this structure is all one solid piece, it's made it really easy for me to level the whole thing off. Uh, it was a bit low on this side. So under here, I put some material to lift this end because uh, it was on a diagonal sloping down. And it's given me a perfect level across the whole system. So uh, a lot easier than uh, the planks of wood and trying to uh, get the exact amount of pavers under them. Uh, this whole system just lifts up. So this might even be a better way to build the other planter systems 
and it's also given me some ideas about building uh, wicking garden beds out of a wooden frame and pallets. So I'm really happy with the level uh, that this is settled at. So now we can go ahead and mix the media that we're going to put in the beds. So today we're going to use the 60 Coco 40 Perlite that I used for uh, my rain gutter grow system. Uh, and we're going to just mix it up in a wheelbarrow. Now, I'm just going to put a small layer of this stuff over the top and then we can plant our seed and then put another small layer of the cocoa perlite mix, making sure you pack it down into these net cups so it allows it to wick up through the medium. So just pack it into the corners so it holds up. Now I'm just going to broadcast some seed over our cocoa perlite mixture. This is actually the first time I've ever broadcast on YouTube. So the seed I'm using is a perennial ryegrass, an annual ryegrass, and a creeping red fescue. Uh, so this is just the cheapest seed I could find. And I've looked and most of these, uh, I think all of the seeds are suitable for chickens to eat. Sorry, the grass of the seeds grow. <laughs> and now I'm just going to put another layer of our cocoa perlite mix. Okay, now we can put our chicken wire over the top before the girls get into this and make a mess. Um, so, just take the piece of chicken wire, uh, Avery mesh, that you pre-cut earlier, and I'm just going to lay it straight over the top. Like this. So now I'm just going to screw down the chicken wire, pull it taut, and fold the edges over the sides uh, and cu by cutting out the corners so that they fold down neatly. So that when the chickens stand on it, they don't push it down and allow them to get to the roots. <laughs> So just solving problems as I go, I've chucked a couple of bits of wood in the center uh, just to stop any sag that would happen uh, right at the middle of the bed. So now all we've got to do is fill up the reservoir with hydroponic nutrient. I'm going to use the Campbell's Blue High Nitrogen Nutrient because that's what grass likes. And I'm going to water in the top. Then we'll wait and see how it grows. So it's been about five days since I planted this seed and some of the grass has shot up so much that it's uh, even coming through the top of the mesh. And this is exactly what I want. So now I'm gonna let the chickens out and they can come and crop the top off the grass and be about their day. So I'm gonna let the chickens out just as a preliminary run so I can get some shots of them eating it. But uh, I would recommend leaving this grass to develop roots so they can't just come along and pluck out the entire of the grass shoot. Hit that like button if you like what you saw today. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of it. And I'll see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs> <laughs>